The change in Gibbs free energy is described here for a single component system and we're going to look at the case where the system is isothermal. So this more general term for the differential change in Gibbs free energy just becomes this. And so this is what we're going to look at for normal hexane. We're showing here the pressure. It's on a log scale and the volume also log scale. So as we raise the pressure, we go from the vapor to the liquid. We see, of course, a large drop in the volume as we get the condensation. So a couple things to keep in mind. There is no absolute value for Gibbs free energy. It's all relative. We're always looking at changes in Gibbs free energy. Very similar to the way we look at changes in enthalpy. Don't have absolute values. So if we want to calculate the change delta G, of course the integral of dG, so delta G is the integral of volume times the pressure. So we could do this integration at the low pressures where we have a gas and for example if this satisfied the ideal gas law then the change at Gibbs free energy would just be substituting in for the ideal gas law. So this is important that it's ideal gas or T or constant log of the final pressure over the initial pressure. So important thing to notice here when we go through a phase change we have a large volume change but that all happens at one pressure so for the phase change delta G is zero and of course we use this relation for calculating phase equilibrium and then for the liquid the volume is essentially constant over a relatively large pressure change. So the delta G change now for the liquid, we can assume the volume of the liquid is essentially constant and multiply by whatever pressure change. So this is for the liquid. So if we want to calculate this integral, we're essentially looking at the area under this curve. But keep in mind, this is a log-log plot. So there's a significant area for the vapor, but the area for the liquid is really, really small compared to this when we look at the, the scale. And indeed, the same data are shown here, but now on a linear scale. So this is the vapor region, and now the area under the liquid curve is really insignificant. And if we were calculating the change, the volume, times integral of V dP to get delta G would be this area under the curve and then this area here is really very small which means the Gibbs free energy does not change much when we change the pressure on the liquid. Now the last part of this is to relate Gibbs free energy to fugacity. So the fugacity now for a pure component is defined in terms of this change in the Gibbs free energy. And remember, at low pressure, the fugacity is equal to the pressure, ideal gas. For a liquid, the fugacity is approximately equal to the saturation pressure of that species. And then for liquid, the fugacity does not change very much. It changes slightly, but it does not change very much when we change the pressure. Much, much less than how much the fugacity changes for a vapor phase.